Uh, the patient, the patient that we've dis descri described in, the, in, the, in our presentation, the poster presentation this year, is a uh, is a child that presented in the UK at about a year at about a year of age, uh, with m a massive organic massive organomegaly and very much a characteristic uh, uh, presentation of presentation of Gaucher's in the th in the sense that we had the hematological param uh, compromised param parameters so had anemia had thrombocytopenia had an enlarged uh, had enlarged split spleen and liver like quite often happens went for a bone marrow biopsy to rule out rule out malignancy and on the bone marrow biopsy had the characteristic gauche cells seen in the UK, we uh, have nas gov uh, national funding for treatment treatment of, go of gauchés, and was put on standard enzyme replacement therapy for go for, gauche for gauchés disease, which is sixty is sixty unit is sixty units per kilo, and for the first two to three years, did very well on this. Had resolution, had good resolution of both hematologically and physically, and didn't have anything above and above and above and beyond had the oculomotor uh, oculomotor apraxia that you associate with type 3 and the um, uh, but apart from that no other overt neurologic neurological symptoms and phenotyp and genotypically had the classical L44P uh, homozygous muta mutation that is very much characteristic of type of type of type 3 gauchos but about sort of four years of age was noted to ha be having increasing abdomin abdominal distension and an MRI at the time showed a, diff a diffuse and multi multi multifocal involvement of the mesenteric lymph nodes. Now this uh, complication that can occur and it does, it certainly has been very much recognized in the type, in the type, type three uh, population and um, really the, always the worry when you get a diffuse mesenteric lymphadenopathy is that it will cause some sort of obstruction to the mesenteric blood flow and therefore back pressure and the potential evolution of a protein losing enteropathy. Now that's a rare complication and I have to em emphasize that the mesenteric lymphadenopathy to that to that extent is also a rare complication of of, ty of, ty of type of type of what's typically seen in type 3 though a degree of lymphadenopathy has been also noted in a number of the sort of type 1 type 1 gauchos as well but so far no none of the type 1s have gone on to develop this unusual compl complication of the protein losing enteropathy the difficulty with having very large lymph in lymph nodes is like i said the protein losing enteropathy but it's quite difficult to treat because surgical resection of these these lymph nodes in turn it disrupts the blood flow through the mesentery and that often exacerbates the situation rather than rather than improves it so um, the thought was really could we affect a non -surg non surgical resolution of this of this lymphadenopathy so um, the option your option your options are in the, in that in that sense would it get better with increased doses of enzyme uh, enzyme reduces the substrate the substrate is what is thought to drive the inflammatory process in the lymph nodes that have ultimately leads to the lymphadenopathy um, that's certainly been tried in the past uh, I uh, used to collaborate with a um, oh no, I, was, I actually work, worked worked for one of one of the consultants who tried most uh, the hardest with that was Dr. Velody in Great Ormond Street who certainly tried to dose at far higher levels to resolve this that certainly wasn't effective for the patients that we we tr we, tr we tried tried there 
and it again didn't seem to be given the past experience of other other set, other centres something uh, an avenue that would be partic particularly effective so we thought about substrate reduction uh, to try and remo remove the inflammatory drive from from that from that si from that side of things being a small molecule it might penetrate penetrate through the through the uh, via the via the blood and be distributed slightly better than enzyme uh, would would be um, and then we thought and along the lines of substrate reduction we had two real cho two real commercially potentially commercially viable choices miglastat and aglutistat miglastat very well established has been used in go in go in go in go shows before but has got quite a gastrointestinal side effect pro profile and has historically been thought have been thought to be have a limitation it's not been our experience in other diseases but given the the plus, plus, plus pro and cons of that we thought let's see what we what we what we what we can do and so we approach we approach approach the comp company for Sanofi for 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 Ligastat and uh, who very kindly provided uh, provided us uh, provided us with with with, uh, with backing toward towards that and our conversations very much about pedi pediatric do dosing had to be had since it's the first patient was ever going to from a paediatric perspective that was ever going to have it and paediatric metabolism and uh, uh, is very much very much different to adult adult uh, pharmacodynamics so there's quite a little bit of work had to be put in and, th and thought on about dosing and the and the metabol metabolism of the liquid um, but we but we eventually start we eventually managed to start it, it was time to establish that that all took some, all took all took some time and unfortunately actually very much at the time that we were starting oligostat the patient went on and evolved into the protein losing enteropathy aspect aspect of aspect of the disease at which time we thought we'd go very with the case report from 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 the Canadian from the Canadian group in Ontario had been re had been released and had done quadruple therapy, i.e., low-fat diet, um, uh, ster uh, oral steroid, and the oral steroid is very much directed up towards protein protein losing enteropathy, and so we went. For, they seemed to be effective in their 16-year-old, so we very much took had uh, had a conversation with them and took and took, and took their lead on that and I'm very pleased to say that so far clinically it's been a success story we're now sort of eight to nine months eight to nine months into 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 therapy we see a degree of resolution of, of the lymph of lymphadenopathy we've got uh, clinical biomarkers that are improving but most importantly for the patient we've been able to re-establish them on a on a diet on a at the moment, slightly low fat, but increasingly normal, normal, di normal diet, and we've seen actual growth in terms of height, height, and phys and other physical characteristics, which was something that had stalled during the development of the protein losing enteropathy before.